Everybody say welcome to our neighbor pastor, Brother Thomas Greeley. Amen. to turn with me to Acts chapter 10. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 10, and I'm going to begin to read at verse number 45. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse number 45. Amen. It says this, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. I think I'm about the 18th person in this service to preach this same message. I have three good reasons why you should receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray with me. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I'm asking it right now. Lord, that your anointed word, that this Bible, Lord, that it would speak to our hearts. Lord, anoint me, Lord, to say of the Holy Ghost, Lord, to have your anointing in me that it would anoint and quicken my mind to say things of your word that, Lord, today that our hearts will be touched by your power. Lord, that you, Lord, would touch our mind to know you, Lord, that by your word we would know you, Lord, that in this place, God, today, Lord, where people are all over this world, that in Jesus' name that you would have your way in our lives. Lord, even right now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Three good reasons why you should receive the Holy Ghost. From another version of the Bible, it's called the message. It's a Bible in contemporary language. These same verses of Scripture say this. The believing Jews which had come with Peter couldn't believe it, couldn't believe that the Holy Spirit was poured out on outsider Gentiles. But there it was, they heard them speaking in tongues, heard them praising God. Then Peter said, do I hear, do I hear any objections to baptizing these friends with water? They received the Holy Spirit exactly as we did. Hearing no objections, he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. These three good reasons that I'm talking about right now, three good reasons why you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Reason number one that I want to point out to you is that you need, everybody say need. need. You need the Holy Ghost. That's reason number one. You need Him. Amen. Reason number two why you need the Holy Ghost is you want the Holy Ghost. Everybody say want. I, you want the Holy Ghost. That's reason number two. Reason number three is you can have the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can have it. You don't have to wait anymore. God has poured out His Spirit. You can have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, when you look at the pouring out of the gift of the Holy Ghost, you need to go to the Word of God to find the account. You need to see it in the Word for yourself. 
You need to know that what happened is true. The word of God is true, my friend. Acts chapter 2 and Beginning with verse number one, it's the account of the birthday of the New Testament church. Yeah. It's the account of God pouring out His Spirit upon yeah. mankind. Yeah. Now, if I want that experience that is in the Word, I can go to the Word and find it there and receive it myself. Amen. Join me. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all of the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all, say all, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Jumping down a few verses, chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will in those days... I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. It's in the word of God, my friend. God poured out his spirit when, when the birthday, when the church was born. God poured out his spirit to empower mankind. Amen. Praise God. Jumping, moving down a few more verses. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that Whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Amen. Moving down again, verse number 31. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Jesus. That his soul was not left in hell. Jesus Christ did not remain in the grave. Amen. Neither did his flesh see corruption. Jesus was a perfect man. He is the almighty God. Amen. Praise God. Verse 32, this Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, identifying what just happened. He hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Moving down, verse number 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. That 
and said unto Peter, uh -huh. to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's an honest question. It is an honest question, my friend. How do I get saved? How do I get some of that? All right. 38. Then Peter, answering their question, said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Get this, for the promise, nobody said promise. It's the promise. Amen. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. God's not changing his mind, my friend. God's not a new God. He's the same God. He's the same God in the world as he is today. He's the same God right now as in this Bible. Woo! Praise God. And with many other words, he did testify and exhort, save yourselves from this untoward generation. I don't know that there's any more racked out crazy generation than our generation right now. I don't think there's any more crazy ideas any place that have ever been than are in the world right now, my friend. We need this idea. We need the Bible in our life. We need the plan of God in us. We need the Word of God in us. Save yourself, my friend. Hallelujah, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word, were baptized. The same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. It was the birthday of the church. There, there was a new beginning. Amen. You ever heard the term New Testament? Amen. You see, God has established this thing for mankind our day right now in the Bible. Amen. Praise God. Bible salvation includes three elements. It includes repentance. Repentance is a turning away from sin. It's a turning to God. It's a, it's a change of mind. It's a decision that you make. It's a choice that you have. Amen. Except you repent. It says in Luke chapter 13 and 3. I tell you, nay, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Amen. We have to repent, turn from sin, turn from our own way, turn to God. Repent and be converted. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I don't know when there is any more refreshing time when I have just been filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't know that there's any better time that I've felt in all my life than when I have experienced the presence and the joy and the infilling of the Lord. Woo! Yeah! Friend, Bible salvation includes water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Acts chapter 8, there were Samaritans that were baptized in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse number 5, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Get this now. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, 
came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. Amen. Sounds like a move of God, doesn't it? Sounds like God doing something special in the midst. Sounds like God's at work. God's touching lives. God's changing people. Jumping down a little bit, Acts 8, verse 12. And when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Amen. You see, water baptism is a part of salvation. Let me go on with this example. Verse 14. And when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 16. Get this now. This is, this is important. If you've got a Bible, look at your Bible right now. Look at verse 16. See if I'm saying this right. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you mean those folks that were lame, that got healed, didn't have the Holy Ghost? You mean... Do you mean to tell me that the people that got the demons cast out of them? You mean the people that already had the great joy of the Lord? You, are you telling me that the Word of God is saying that all them folks, they didn't have the Holy Ghost? Wow. Look, look at the Word. Verse 17 says, Then laid there their hands on them, and they receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have been healed in my body. Amen. I know that I've had unclean things put out of my mind. Amen. I know that I've felt the joy of the Lord. But greater than all that is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Moving down just a little bit more. Acts chapter 8 verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, Here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down, went down. They went down into... Yeah, a little bit of water is not good enough. A sprinkling of water is not good enough. You don't go down into a sprinkling. You go down into a watery grave in the name of Jesus Christ. In baptism. Amen. They went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. That is the manner, immersion. That is putting you under in the name of Jesus Christ. It applies the name of the Lord to our lives. It remits sin. It pays for sin. In the name of Jesus, there is only one name that we are saved by. There is only one name that is above every other name. It's only in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God, Saul of Tarsus had a revelation. He was a religious zealot. Man, he was on fire for religious things. It was in his blood. It was in his mind. He was working at it continually. He worked hard at it. He was faithful. He was committed. Saul of Tarsus had a revelation. Then he 
was baptized. Let me show you in Scripture, Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse number 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, now bright light, knock you down, laying on the ground, can't see, voice from heaven. It's kind of dramatic, actually. Wow. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, this is a good question. There's a lot of people in our world today with this very same question. A lot of people want to know who God is. He fell to their hurt. Oh, who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You want to know who Jesus is? You want to know who God is? Right here, God answers Saul, tells him, I am Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, wilt thou, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. You notice that the voice from heaven didn't tell him. He sent him to a preacher. Amen. Praise the Lord. Moving down a few verses, Acts chapter 9, verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into his house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, you know, remember this is the guy that was killing people? This is the guy that was killing the Christians? This is the guy with the authority from the, from the high who? <laughs> to go out and capture anybody speaking this name? To put them in bonds? To capture them, bring them bound hand and foot to prison? Brother Saul? The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee. Praise God. He identified Jesus Christ as the mighty God. Amen. As he appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, he hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You see, even the man that wrote 14 books of the New Testament had to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Nobody's exempt. Nobody. Amen. Now, Acts chapter 10. Cornelius, his household was baptized by Peter. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man named, or a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. And he commanded us. Oh, I'm jumping down now to verse number 42. Amen. Acts chapter 10, verse 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. Amen. And to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the, of the judge, to be the judge of quick and dead. Amen. To give to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake the words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. They of the circumcised, of the, circ the religious folks, 
they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. People still doing that today. I can still tell. There was a there was a lady in our church just last week Amen. that had been seeking the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I was praying with her a little while. I went and prayed with somebody else. They came back to the pulpit and I looked over and you know what? She was speaking in other tongues and magnifying God. You know what? I know what's going on here. I've seen this before. God just filled her with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You see, in Acts chapter 19, the disciples of John the Baptist, John the Baptist were baptized by Paul. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Disciples of the greatest prophet that had ever lived. A followers, disciples. People who are already religious. People who had already changed their lives and turned themselves toward God. Hallelujah. Woo! Finding certain disciples, verse number 2, and he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? I know there's a lot of people who love God. I know there's a lot of people that have a committed life to the, to the right things in life. There's a lot of people who love the Lord. There's a lot of people who love God, who have a committed life, who are faithful disciples. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, here's an honest reply to an honest question. We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Man, don't look down on them. Man, they're wanting more from God. They have already changed their lives. They're already disciples. They've already repented. Verse number three, and he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. You see, John was the prophet that was above all the Old Testament prophets. John was the one that identified the Lamb of God. Amen. He was, he identified Jesus Christ as the Lamb. Amen. Verse number four. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. He wasn't putting them down. He wasn't degrading them at all. He was ex simply explaining that God has brought you a great way. God has already brought you to this place. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. Verse number five. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. You see, these disciples, when they heard about this more that you can have in God, they said, I want some. I want that too. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Bible salvation includes repentance. It includes baptism in the name of Jesus. It includes receiving the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Receiving the Holy Ghost didn't given by a sign of great joy. I know people who have great joy in the Lord. Amen. They still need the Holy Ghost. I know people that have been miraculously touched by God. I've seen miracles with my eyes. Unrefutable. 
and they still need the Holy Ghost. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, Old Testament. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put in you. You see, this has been the plan of God for, from all time, from the Old Testament to now and forever. Amen. John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot, everybody say cannot, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Anybody want to be in the kingdom of God? Anybody want to touch from the Lord? Anybody want Jesus Christ in their life? You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts chapter, excuse me, let me go to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, if you don't have the presence of the Lord, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be politically incorrect. But I do want to preach you the word. I do want to give you the truth. I do want to show you by scripture. Amen. John chapter 7 Verse number 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. From verse 39, Thus spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. I'm telling you, if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus Christ, God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you get more than salvation. Yes, you do receive salvation. Hallelujah. You receive power to live free from the habits that sin has opposed upon your life. You get power to overcome the flesh. Power to overcome my habits. Power to overcome adversity. Amen. The joy of the Lord from Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 says, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. If you want to have joy in the Lord, if you want to have power in the life, I'm telling you my friend, you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost will lead you. Amen. The Holy Ghost will guide your... You'll say, well, I don't know how to live any better. God will help you when you receive the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will protect you from harm. Amen. The Holy Ghost will help you when you were unable to help yourself. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost will make you a better husband. The Holy Ghost will make you a better father. The Holy Ghost will make you a better wife, a better mother, a better person. The Holy Ghost is, is an anointing from God. Amen. Now, this doesn't make any sense. You might have heard it yourself. Somebody, some people have a, a click not quite clicking in the mind. Some people may say, I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost after I get my life straightened up. You know, as soon as I get a few things in order, I'll come to your church. You know what? You need the Holy Ghost so you can get straightened up. So you can get off of the floor. So you can get out of the mud. So you can be set free. So you can break the addiction. So you can love God. Amen. You know what? If you got that kind of mind.
mindset, you're never going to make it. You need God. God can do more for you than you could ever have done for yourself. Amen. Now, I said I had three reasons. You want the Holy Ghost. Now, there are probably some people right now looking at a screen or maybe looking at me in person that could possibly be saying in their own mind, Preacher, how could you be bold enough to presume that you know what I want? It's easy. I know what you want. Now, hold on. You might say, this guy's nuts. Well, maybe I'm a little bit crazy, but that's all right. I'm crazy for God. You were created by God for God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things, get this, were created by him and for him. Amen. So if you're on earth, if you're alive right now, God created you to give him glory. Amen. You were created to commune with God. God created man and woman to have a relationship with him. Adam and Eve learned of it in the Garden of Eden. They walked with them in the cool of the day. Amen. God wants us to have a relationship with him. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden in the cool of the day. God wants you to walk with him. God wants to be with you, to guide you, to help you. God wants to be in you, to give you power. God placed a longing inside every man, inside every woman that can only be satisfied by him. There is no replacement for the presence of God. Amen. It doesn't matter how far you reach out in this world. It doesn't matter how much education you receive. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how much power you attain to. It does not matter how much prestige others may give you. It doesn't matter how strong you are, how many friends you have on Facebook. It doesn't matter the relationships that you built. Nothing, everybody say nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing can satisfy the longing that God put in your soul. Amen. Except by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like it, my friend. There is no replacement. There is nothing else. There's nothing, nowhere that compares to this. Amen. When you tried everything, and I know a lot of folks have tried a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that tears down and destroys and kills. When you've tried everything, and everything has failed to fill that void, failed to fill that place that God reserves for himself, Try Jesus. You can have him right now. You can have him today. You don't have to wait another hour. Amen. Amen. The third reason is you can have the Holy Ghost. God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. The prophet Joel, I've read it already. Let me read it again. Joel 2, verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. It was prophesied from times of old, from the Old Testament till now. It has been already fulfilled. Amen. <coughs> the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy is recorded in Acts chapter 2. We've read of it already. 
verse 16 and 17, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. You see, the apostle Peter, who had been given the keys to the kingdom, he'd been given the authority to tell people how to be saved. Amen. Yes, sir. Said in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell us what to do. Tells us how to do it. And now he tells us why. For the remission of sins. You see, when they baptized you, if it was not, under the water by immersion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then you have not yet fulfilled this verse of Scripture. Tells us why. For the remission. You see, the only price that can pay for my sin was the blood of a spotless lamb that was given at a cross at Calvary. It was shed by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ is God that robed himself in the flesh of a man, gave himself on a cross at Calvary. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all, what do you say, all? all, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. God's not changing his mind. This is the word of God. I've given it to you today. Jesus said, would you stand with me here in Norwich Tabernacle? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. The word of God ends with an invitation. If you look at the very back of your book, the last verse in the Bible, Revelations, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, The Spirit of the Bride, Say, come. Let him that heareth say, come. Have you heard what the word has to say? And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. You see, this word of God is absolutely true. No man has the authority to change this word. You see, this word is established by God. This is the plan of salvation. This is what God wants for our lives. There are people right here today in this room that have already experienced this plan. And there's people in this room today, there's people that can hear my voice right now that, that God wants to refill with the Holy Ghost. God wants you to have a fresh anointing. Maybe you've been away from God for a little while. Maybe you haven't been as committed to God as you should be. Maybe you need a touch from God in your body. Maybe you need God for the very first time. You know, I've been living for God for a long time. I'm 50 and I got the Holy Ghost when I was 12. But I need the Holy Ghost today. I need to live in the power of the Holy Ghost again tomorrow. It never ends, my friend. I gotta walk this way with Jesus. I'm opening this altar right now. If you have need from God, I'm asking you to come. If you'd like a fresh anointing from God, I'm asking you to come. If you're thirsty for the things of the Lord, I'm asking you right now, come. Come on, church. Come right now. Come and find God. Come and seek Him. God is here right now, today, to fill your need. Praise God. Jesus, I love you, Lord. 
Lord, I love you, Jesus. I worship you, God. I adore you, Lord. We've heard the word of the Lord. All of you that were recently filled with the Holy Ghost, recently baptized in Jesus' name, you need a good refilling now. You've had many things come against you. Amen. Come on up here and get involved in this. Amen. All you folks on the Internet, we're going to be leaving you in a moment. But we have people here who are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost today. You be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've heard the word. It came from the word of God. Amen. There are people here today who need the Holy Ghost. God bless you folks out there. Thank you for joining us. As the lights go out, you can start watching again and see the service over again in about 15 minutes and watch it over and over and tell your friends about it. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Believe. Believe on the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe on the Lord. Praise God. Believe on the Lord. Hallelujah. Receiving the Holy Ghost. Receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Call upon the Lord who is worthy. You call, he'll answer. Hallelujah. Let him refresh you. Praise God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. Call upon Jesus' name. With all of your heart. With all of your heart. With all of your heart. Hallelujah. Put your soul into it. Be intense with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus. 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 Put your soul into it. Hallelujah. Call and he'll answer. Oh, yes. Receive the Holy Ghost. If you haven't repented of your sins, tell God you're sorry, and then let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. We have water if you want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a robe. We can get you some clothes. right now. He knows you inside and out. There's nothing to hide. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, leave here full. Leave here refreshed. Leave here on a mountaintop. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Jesus is here right now to help you right now. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes! Let God give you the victory. Hallelujah! God fill you, Jesus.